All right, today we're going to be tying the uh, the tarpon toad. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, White's Tackle and Stewart. They gave me this uh, loaner vice here while my Renzetti's getting fixed. So uh, thanks to them, so we're able to actually tie some flies. We start out here today with a uh, Gamagatsu. Um, ah, what's the name of this hook? I can't remember the name. Uh, uh, SL12S short S. Uh, this is a size number two. We have some chartreuse thread here. I believe this is 140 denier uh, Danville. So we're just going to go and we're just going to start by wrapping the shank with thread. Get it from the front all the way to the back here, right as it starts to curve. And the first material that we're going to add on here is our bunny strip. But what I've done is I've, I've poked a hole in our bunny strip and put a piece of 40 pound uh, mason hard mono through it. And I've kind of made it to where it sits maybe an inch and a half back from the end of the hide. Because what we're going to do is we're going to tie this bunny strip in upside down just like this. And it's a little bit harder once you've already tied the mono in and then you try to push it through the, uh, the fur and the hide. So. We're going to get our pliers here on the bottom side and all we're going to do is just kind of crimp down a little bit of the mono to give us a little place we can tie into that's not uh, that's not rounded and just be a nice little flat area so it doesn't pull off or anything on us. So we'll just go ahead get that wrapped right on top of the hook shank. Try to keep this mono as straight as we can possibly get it. That looks pretty good. You got a little bit of extra there. There's no worries, you can just kind of get your scissors and cut some of it out. Get it tied down nice and tight. And all we're going to do is just slide our, our bunny strip down, kind of fold some of that hair back kind of hold it, get it so it wraps the shank a little bit, we'll get a few thread wraps on here, let's get some tight ones going down, kind of holding this rabbit strip now in place. So the point of having the mono on there is so that it acts as a foul guard. That rabbit strip now won't be able to move on you. It's not going to wrap your hook while you're casting and cause you to lose any shots at, uh, at tarpon. Just kind of trim as much of that out as we can. So then we're going to bring our mono back over, kind of see how much we need here. That looks good cut out the excess on the top and we'll do the same thing on the top that we did on the bottom. We'll just take our pliers, kind of mash down, get it so it's not rounded. If you leave it rounded, that's still fine, but it, it tends to pull out a little bit. You know, if, uh, if a fish or anything is able to actually grab onto that mono on the back, you could pull it out of the thread. Um, so I, I typically say, you know, just go ahead and mash it down if you want. You can add a couple drops of, uh, of super glue to help it as well. It's always a good idea. So, again, you get a little excess. Just go ahead and cut that off. Now you can see, I mean, I can, I can try to twist this around as long as that bunny strip is, and it doesn't want to come around on me. So I'm going to trim it off the back side here. I'm not going to make it too long. I usually like to have it, you know, two, two and a half inches off the back. Just enough to where that bunny's showing off the back. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is going to make our collar, in which we're going to start out with some cross-cut zonker. But I'm going to make a dubbing loop because I do not want the hide from the uh, cross cut on here. It's just adding unnecessary bulk, unnecessary weight. There's no reason I see to have it there. So we're gonna go ahead and make this dubbing loop. All 
right. We got a little bit of yellow cross cut. Just go ahead and get that in our loop. You don't need much of the cross cut. Um, really, I'm just using it for bulk. I'm going to cover it up in a second, anyways, with uh, with schlopping. So this is just helping, kind of add a little bit of extra volume to the uh, to the schlopping. A little bit of extra movement, kind of kind of a nice uh, because of the color of this yellow too. It's a nice little. Uh, movement from the green almost to like the chartreuse -y, it's not even a word uh, but more chartreuse looking yellow that the cross cut is to a much brighter yellow darker yellow I guess would be more accurate um, schlopping feather so I'm gonna go ahead we're gonna twist up our our rabbit here get it nice and tight Take our dubbing brush, kind of make sure that's brushed out good. And then we'll just get our hackle pliers, clip it here on the back, cut out some of this excess thread. Now all we're going to do is just palmer that right in front of that rabbit strip off the back. Keep in mind the the rabbit strip off the back. You don't have to use rabbit. You could use pseudo hair. You could use marabou. There's a ton of different materials that you can use for tarpon toads. Basically, any anything that's going to have decent movement to it will work on a tarpon toad. If it if it comes or if it sits in the water and and has a lot of movement when you strip it, it'll work out well. go now we're just gonna pull our rabbit back a little bit here wrap back on it some there we go. now we're gonna get a uh, schlopping feather so we have these nice long schlopping feathers here I don't need all of this fluffy part here at the bottom of the stem so I'm gonna go ahead and pull a lot of that off So we pull a lot of the bottom part off. So now we just have the uh, the more webby fibers here. We're gonna do this feather concave down on top of the hook. Just kind of tie it in right in front of where we tied in that rabbit. Move our thread forward and out of our way. Cut the rest of the stem off. Now we're going to go ahead and just palmer in our schlopping feather. Just one wrap right after another. Kind of turned it on me. Just kind of try to stroke some of these feather fibers or feathers back after each uh, after each wrap so they'll kind of trap each other if you don't just keep kind of going forward you don't need to use this whole feather because it's quite a big feather but just enough to where you get that yellow and they're good that's that's probably good right there all I'll do is just capture that And we'll just cut out the rest of this feather here. Here, I like to just work my way up to the eye of the fly. And we're going to add some eyes on this thing. So, 
we're going to be using these uh, these large mono eyes. Same thing that we use on the uh, on the flexo crabs. Except we're not going to cut them in half. We are just going to tie them in, just like we would tie in dumbbell eyes. So, I'm going to make sure we get these nice and even there. Be a little hard to get them straight, but that looks pretty good. Now we're just going to work our thread back again. We'll tie up onto this uh, onto the slap in here a little bit, get it all to lay back nice and tight, give us a little more room to tie our uh, our body. That should work. Well, starting starting to take shape a little there. Now we're just going to take a little clothespin, kind of hold all of our materials back, and we're going to get uh, we're going to get some of this uh, this bait fish hair here. You can find this stuff now on uh, on our website at CW Flies. Great stuff. It's just like EP fiber. Uh, I think it's only though like two dollars a pack. So I mean, it comes in a bunch of colors. Great for doing toad style bodies. You know, nice and cheap. On a side note too, we also are going to have a lot more materials added to the site here soon. These Gamagatsu SL12 hooks will be up there. The uh, the mono eyes will be up there. So slowly but surely adding more uh, more more stuff. So all we did here was we just did six wraps over one side, and we're going to pull that side back. And we'll do six wraps going the other way to make a little cross. You made a little cross there. Get a couple wraps in front. We can make this thing. So as you can see, looks like a little cross section now. And we'll take our clothespin off. Move all of our materials back and out of our way because we don't want to trap materials. And we'll just repeat that same step right in front of the last step. So we'll just come over it, tie it down, six wraps. Take our material, pull it back and out of the way for us. couple wraps in front and just move our clothespin. This will keep your toe bodies really nice and tight. Uh, I always hate it when there's a lot of gap in toe bodies. And the OCD in me just can't stand it. So again, six wraps going one way, six wraps going the other and we're going to do this all the way until we get right behind those mono eyes. Nope. Almost right behind them. Looks like we're going to have a little bit of a gap between our mono eyes and our body, but we might have a little piece that we can put between there. Let's see how much room we got. I think we can fit one more in there. I just don't like that space. Let's try to make this piece a little smaller, a little thinner. And we'll see if we can just tie it right in there. Yeah, that'll work out. I'm gonna fold that back and again get it right behind the eyes. Everything looks nice and nice and seamless here. Get a 
couple wraps here on the front, and we're good. So that body looks a little bit unruly at the moment. So we're just going to take it, we're going to try to get my hand out of the way here. Kind of hold up all the fibers here on one side. And then there's just a nice 45 degree cut. Cut all those fibers. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Some people like to hold them both up at the same time. I don't. They come out a little bit different. No big deal. All you need is to be relatively close. Nothing's going to be perfectly symmetrical in nature. So, next thing we can go ahead and do is just whip finish. Just tie off right here at the front of the fly. Six or seven turns will work. Now we're going to clean up the head a little bit. I'm going to use this uh, carterizing tool. So all I'm going to do is just heat up my carterizing tool and just go a little bit above these fibers. And that'll kind of melt these fibers down, make them look, you know, neat and not so, uh, not so unruly on the front. Do the same thing on the bottom. And there we go. So the last thing we're going to do is just add a little bit of... Deer Creek uh, Fine Flex. We're just going to add that to the uh, little bit on the thread wraps on the bottom here. Just kind of add a little bit more durability, not very much. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the fly. So great fly for doing uh, tarpon down in the keys. Great fly for pretty much tarpon anywhere. You can tie it in a variety of different colors. And like I said, uh, you know, we're going to start having some of these materials. Uh, this weekend you'll be able to find the gamagatsus for uh, on our site. The bait fish fibers already up there. Uh, we have a number of other great materials on there, and hopefully I'm waiting on on one more order to come in. But uh, we'll start having some kits up there soon, so you guys can tie some of these flies yourselves. So thanks for uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully you guys like the fly. If you did, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Share with your friends. We have, a, uh, we have a contest going on right now, so if you are subscribed, you have a chance of winning this big uh, fly box here, full of a uh, bunch of great flies. So, yep, go ahead and subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.